Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Yeshua, for this day, Father, the day that you have made, Father. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it, Father. We thank you, Lord, as we walk by faith and not by sight, Father. We thank you for all that you're doing and what you are going to do, Father. We thank you, Lord God, for this, again, this assembly, Lord God, as we gather together in your precious, holy, mighty name, Father. We ask that you lead us and you guide us, Father. Lord, as I decrease, you increase, Father, for this is all about you, your love, Lord God, towards your people, Lord God. We thank you again, Lord, that you hear what we're saying, Lord God. Lord God, you see what's going on, Father, and you love us, Father God. And we just thank you so much for who you are, Lord, and that we are thankful that you do love us, Father. And we just, again, ask you to take over. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's go ahead and sound the shofar. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified with his commandments and commanded us to light the Shabbat candles. Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and sing the Shema. Shema Israel. Son Yeshua HaMashiach. We pray for Israel, Lord. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem in the old city and in the new city, Lord God. Lord God, in the modern city streets along the, the avenues, Lord God, and in the highways and the byways, all the way to the hotel, the different gates that enter the old city, Lord God, and the synagogues that are in the old city and outside the old city, Lord. We pray for your shalom. We pray that our Jewish brothers and sisters would come to know you, Yeshua, as the Mashiach and experience true shalom that comes through you. We also pray that your peace would extend throughout all of Eretz Israel, Lord God. Lord God, as far north as the Golan and south into Judea and Samaria. As far west, Lord God, as Tel Aviv and Haifa. And as far east as the Jordan River, Lord. We ask that your shalom be upon the whole land, and especially we pray according to your scriptures for the peace of Jerusalem, as we say, Sha'alu Shalom, Yerushalayim, Amen. Amen. Uh, Pastor Bob, please pray for our nation. Heavenly Father, we come before you with thanksgiving. Thank you that we know you as a mighty God, a powerful God, a mercy God. We pray for America, the beautiful Heavenly Father. This America was founded on you, Heavenly Father. But the English people have turned it back on you. I pray, Heavenly Father, that your anointing will just come down and touch this life, Lord. Not only in the mind, but in the heart. They will recognize that they are lost. And they will recognize and will watch over our nation. Lord, touch America once again as they humble themselves and take it and do for the work of way. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Pastor Lynette, we pray for um, this city and the congregation. Pray, Father, all over the world for you. We pray to honor the Lord. We lift up the city of Jefferson, Father God. We lift up this congregation. 
organization work. We are your people, Father God. We ask God to just give us a boldness as a strength, God, to keep on keeping on, Father God. Help us not to be weary in well doing, Lord God. We thank you, God, for giving your congregation, God, um, blessings, Father God, and the anointing, Father God, to go speak your word, God, and help us be witnesses unto you, Father God, and tell others about you, Father God. And we pray for Jefferson, Lord God. Lord God, that you will bring salvation, you will bring deliverance, Father God, and you will touch this city, Father God, and they will be on fire for you, Father God. For you are coming soon, Jesus, and we ask God that you just help us all be ready for your return, Father God. And God, you're looking for uh, uh, people without spot or wrinkle, Father God, and it's only through you and through your strength, your power, Father God, that that can happen, Lord God. And we look to you, Father, and in my name we pray, amen. Amen. All right, we're here to what? Rejoice in the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's go ahead as we go into worship and just thank God and worship Him. And I'm, hallelujah, that He has every everything that He wants to do, that He will do. We yield to Him. Thank you, Father. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.
surrender to you, Father God. There is no one other, Lord, that deserves all the praise and all the glory, Father God. We exalt you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you. We worship you. You're welcome in this place. Lord, we concentrate on you, Father God, and we exalt your mighty name, Lord. Lord, we ask God to change this atmosphere, Father God. Lord, we worship you. We worship you, Lord. Cause I tasted that sweetness 
Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us the part of the earth. Again, Lord God, we just, there's no words, Lord God, to say how thankful we are, Lord God, that you loved us, Father. Lord God, that you came from heaven to earth, and Lord God, you rose from the dead, and you're coming back for your people again. You're coming back for your bride. Thank you, Yeshua. Thank you, Lord that you have given us life, life eternal, Father. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done for us. We just give you the praise, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for your presence here with us right now. We thank you. Give you the glory, Father God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you that you love us, Father, and you did all that you did for us. Hallelujah. And we thank you that you are faithful, Lord God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Lord, for all, Lord God. For by your stripes, Lord God, you said we have been healed. Mentally, physically, spiritually, in every area, Father. Hallelujah. Lord, as we receive and partake, Lord God, in what you've done for us. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Let's go ahead and partake. Hallelujah. <laughs> Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us the fruit of the vine. Oh Lord, how can we say how thankful we are, Lord God, that you are the vine, Lord God, and we are the branches, Lord God. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that you have, Lord God, brought us in, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you that your blood, Lord God, will never lose its power. We thank you, Lord God, for your precious blood, that it is applied to us, your people, Father. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Your blood, Lord God. Hallelujah. That redeems us, Lord God, and cleanses us. We just thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For your precious blood. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's partake. Hallelujah. And we're going to um, pray for some requests of just actually that one uh, a few minutes ago. So let's believe what Yeshua did in our lives as we put um, petitions up before the Lord, prayers up before the Lord. So if you have somebody that you're praying for, we're going to agree together. So just lift them up to the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, I don't know every name, Lord, but you know every heart here and every heart that's on Facebook, Father. Lord, as they lift up their selves, Lord, or they lift up others, Father, Lord, we thank you for touching your people, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, those, Lord God, that are your people, Lord God, that are going through some illnesses or different things at this moment, Lord, they ask for prayer because they know, Lord God, 
that you are the only one, Father God, that can heal, Lord. You are the only one, Lord God, that can take every sickness away from us, Father. We thank you, Lord. Right now, Lord God, and we thank you for healing baby uh, Stefan, Lord God. We thank you for healing him, Lord God. For you are good and you're faithful and you do answer praise, Lord. You do see and you do care and you do love us. We thank you, Lord, as we are now bringing together, Lord God, for all the people that we've lifted up before you right now. We thank you for really right now, Lord, strengthening him right now, Father God. Whatever is the problem, Lord God, you know. And we thank you, Lord, as we speak your word to him, Lord, for where your word is sent, it will not return void. So we thank you for healing. We thank you, Lord God, for a deliverance, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for all, Lord God, that you're touching right now, Father God. We thank you, Lord. For you, again, you know every situation, Father. For AJ, Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God, for deliverance. Lord, for Aaron, Lord God, and Sharon, Lord, strengthen them, Father God, through whatever they're going through. And Jasmine, Lord God, we thank you, Lord, and, and for uh, Darlene and Annie, Lord, and all these others, Lord God. There's so many, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that you would teach your people the truth, Lord God. And that, Lord, that we understand we can do all things through you who strengtheneth us, Father. And we will come through in victory with you, Lord God. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. We're believing and we're trusting God. Amen. He's faithful. He's good. We may not see things right away, but we know that he is awesome and he does answer our prayers. Um, <clears throat> so our core portion for this week was Matot, which means tribes, and Matse, which is journeys of. And that was in uh, the Torah portion was Numbers 30. 1 through 32 through 42. And then numbers again, double portion. 33, 1 through 36, and then chapter 36 and to verse 13. The half tour, Isaiah 66, 1 through 24. Matthew in the Brit Hashel, Matthew 5, 33 through 37, and double portion on this, and James 4, 1 through 12. And we're going to go ahead and read Numbers 31, 1 through 12. Adonai said to Moshe, On behalf of the people of Israel, take vengeance on the Midianim. After that, you will be gathered to your people. Moshe said to the people, Equip men from among yourselves for war. They are to go out and fight Midian in order to carry out Adonai's vengeance on Midian. You are to send to the war a thousand men from every one of the Israel's tribes, so that one out of the thousands of the people of Israel, a thousand armed men from each tribe, twelve thousand altogether, were mustered for war. Moshe sent them a thousand from each tribe to the war. He sent them and Pinchas, the son of Eleazar, the Cohen, to war with the holy utensils and the trumpets for sounding the alarm in his care. They fought against Midian, as Adonai ordered Moshe, and killed every male. They killed the kings of Midian along with the others who were slain. Evi, Rechem, Zur, Hur, Riva, the five kings of Midian. They also killed Bela, the son of Beor, with the sword. The people of Israel took captive the women of Midian and their little ones, and they took as booty all their cattle, flocks, and other goods. They set fire to all their cities and the areas where they lived and all their camps. They took all the booty and all the people and animals they had captured. Uh, and brought the captive's booty and spoiled to Moshe, Eleazar the Kohen, in the community of Israel in the camp on the plains of Moab by the yard across from Jericho. Amen. Thank you. Um, before I forget, um, Sister Darlene said it's a big old fire. I want where? 20. 20. So let's pray. I don't know um, what was going on. I, I think it was raining, so it might help. But let's pray for that. Dear Heavenly Father, 
we don't know what's going on, Lord God, but we ask that, Lord, that whatever that fire is, is doing, Father, that you will protect people, Father, their homes, their animals, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, as we just lift them up before you, Father. Lord God, that you are with people, Lord God. You love them and you will protect them, Father. We thank you for helping them, Father. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Okay, so again, there is so much, and also the, a lot of things maybe uh, we don't understand until we dig deeper into the into the uh, history and into the, the biblical history and into the regular um, history, so we can understand more. But this is what the Lord was showing me for this Torah portion. <clears throat> um, that this, this Torah portion, the Torah part, is much about a spiritual warfare. So Yahweh is teaching us that we are more than a conqueror. And as a child of Yahweh, we are redeemed by the blood of Yeshua. So we cannot be cursed because he's already blessed us. And if you remember the different portions that we have read, they, they all connect because it's uh, starting from one to the other. Uh, this basically, the story goes on and tells us everything that's going on. So, the only way to be cursed, as we read in Balaam and Balak, is if we reject Yahweh and turn away from the truth and join um, ourselves to Balak, Baal, which basically is Satan and his kingdom, or we can say the earthly ways. Um, in other words, if we sell out to Satan, because this world will pass away in all that it that's in it, and that's in Matthew 24, 35. Matthew 24, 35 says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. His words are still holding the heavens in, in place. So praise God, we know he's real and alive. Yahweh taught us that, he, he told us that this stuff was gonna happen to those who sell out for the things of this world. So we see this basically in the spiritual battle against Israel with Balak and the false prophet Balaam. So uh, we may acknowledge that we're in a spiritual warfare because we read and, and of course the word of the Lord tells us about and he warns us about it. But do we really with all of our heart believe that we're in a spiritual warfare? Or do we even believe the devil exists? You see it all around us, how people live, even though they say they believe, they act like uh, everything is tiptoeing. Not everybody, believe me. Thank God that there's people that do love God and do recognize it. But there are others that, and this is a warning, that don't really believe. They don't really believe that the devil exists. They don't really believe that we're in a spiritual warfare and the word of God tells us. And not just that, but we go through these things ourselves. So if we receive the word of God, we're going to actually notice and understand what is going on. So do we also believe, as a believer in God, that there is no greater power than our God and that he loves us? Do we really believe that he loves us? Uh, Romans 8, 39 says, there is no power above or beneath us, no power that could be found in the universe that can distance us from God's passionate love, which he lavishes upon us through our Lord Yeshua, the anointed one. Wow, he's passionate love, he passionately loves us. You see the passion of Christ. You see his passion for us that he died on that cross for us, but in rose. Yeshua, Messiah, he loves you, and he is our foundation. He's our cornerstone, and we can do all things through him. Through Messiah. You see, the carnal mind or our soul cannot understand the spiritual. John 3 6 says, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, and it neither can be. And John 6 63 says, It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. That's John 6, 63. 
their spirit, can, the flesh will never be able to understand the spiritual things until we are redeemed. And then the spirit of God speaks to us. God's spoken word will, it will cause something to happen because his word is not void. So when you hear the word, when you read the word, when the word is being brought forth, something is happening in us. It's because his word, it's not going to go void. Hebrews 11, 3 says, By faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of Yahweh, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. Isaiah 55, 10, 11 says, God's word will not come back to him void. His word will accomplish where it is sent. Now his word will cause something to happen in you and in me. Some will get mad, some will get glad, according to how we receive his word. That's what his word does. It does something. It's not going to go back. It's how we receive it. The world does not understand Yahweh's word because his word is spiritual. And he's a spirit. And he must be worshipped in spirit and in truth. So, praise the Lord. Yeshua ministers to your spirit because he is spirit. Amen? Amen. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to go. I'm just going to say this. A lot of this, my point is that we are in a spiritual warfare, and I am not um, here to say anything that I think or anything that tickles anybody's ears or what makes our flesh and mind feel good. That's not what I do. That's not what I'm here for. I'm not here to repeat the, I'm here because I want to repeat the warning, which we are in a spiritual warfare, and we have to have on the whole armor of Yahweh because it is spiritual. It's a spiritual thing. And I, I want to plant the seed of truth in our spirits, not our soul or flesh. It's in our spirits that it works inside out. And to speak Yahweh's word because it's the truth. Again, this is a spiritual warfare. Wow. And Yeshua, he ministers to your spirit because he is the spirit. He is life. And the only one that can touch you, your inner man, it's up, it's Yeshua, and it's up to us to receive his love and for us to love him back. So, again, I just, anybody, I just want you to know, I am not wanting to argue about anything, to try to make anyone change their mind on anything. Yahweh is the only one that can do that. I just want to speak the word of God. We're in a spiritual warfare. And just like at the Republican, uh, Republican meeting, what we're... While I was praying, I said, we got so much fighting going on around us already. Why do we take it within? Don't do it within. We don't need to fight within. We need to unite together to fight against the enemy because this is a spiritual warfare. And in the fight of Balak and Balaam, we see that uh, one of the Israel's princes, he was in the camp of uh, Israel and he came against his own people and others came against and it caused many people to die because of the sin. So if we uh, receive if we see, receive what the word says amen we will be blessed but if we reject him the Bible tells us what's going to happen because the Bible says the truth will set you free and a lot of times God's word makes people feel uncomfortable I mean I felt it several times until I yielded to God and said, okay, God, you, you did what you want because the truth is going to set us free because our carnal minds will fight it. it it'll always fight against the spirit. So this is basically what happened to Israel. They rejected spiritual truth. We're, in the Bible says, where do you think all these strives come from? Okay, where do you think all this strife right now comes from in the house of God between people and all these different denominations because they're having men's ideas? James 4, 1 says, From whence comes wars and fighting among you? Come they not hence even of your lust that war your members? F flesh and spirits fighting. So we don't understand everything. No one understands everything. But the Bible says if we seek him, we will find him. If we seek him with all of our heart, that we will find him. So Yeshua is the cornerstone that his people rejected. And not just in his day on earth, but now he's the cornerstone. And many people, his own people, reject him because they reject the truth. 
They reject the spiritual things of Yahweh. They reject Messiah, the cornerstone, who is our foundation of faith. To, uh, today, God's people do the same thing. He comes to his people, and they reject him. How, how and why do we reject him? No, we have a spiritual battle going on. We have to know what is of God and what is not of God. So by rejecting the, the Yeshua, his truth, the spiritual things of God, it's refusing to believe the spiritual truth. So in doing so, there is no foundation. So how then will our faith hold up if we don't have a foundation? Matthew 7, 26, in the complete Jewish Bible, it, it, it likes to use a lot of words stupid for some reason. I've seen it many times. But it says, but everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a stupid man who built his house on the sand. That's the complete Jewish Bible uh, interpretation of it. <laughs> but anyway, it's basically, might as well be said in those words because there's no foundation on sand if you build your house on sand. What, and what you build will certainly fall, and nothing's going to be left of it because it's built on another foundation, not of God. And it says foolish people build with no solid foundation. So if you build your faith on a sandy foundation, it's not going to stand long, and it's going to cause doubt, confusion, a whole bunch of different things. But Yeshua's word, it says, will never fail. Yeshua's word holds us together. He's our foundation. And we are built on the solid rock. And we're built on a solid rock. That's not going to be moved. And we will not be seduced by the carnal mind because Yeshua is our truth. And the carnal mind, according to 2 Timothy 3, 7, says, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And just about a month ago, I was talking to somebody. And... Uh, Gave, we were discussing that scripture, and this person has been a, a Christian a long, long time, has degrees in uh, religion and some other degrees in theology, and told me that was him. Always learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Why is that? Because of that spiritual battle that we're having, and because the mind compares our, our, men, our men's ways or this world's ways to God's spiritual truth and that can't be done. There's no comparison to God in his spirit because spirit is spirit and flesh is flesh and God made the flesh. So they have, our flesh has to our mind has to be redeemed and surrender unto the Lord. So if you don't have Yeshua's doctrine and don't accept the truth which is spiritual, there's no foundation. That means that we're going to be shifted all over, confused, no direction, and our solid foundation, his end, Yeshua, he is our truth. He's a spiritual truth. He's our foundation. Yahweh tells us from the beginning, the seed of Satan is defeated. The only way we can be defeated, as we read in the Pirishah, is by joining ourselves to Baal, joining ourselves to doctrines of devils, believing lies and rejecting the truth. So Israel's war was a spiritual war. Not They didn't go out fighting just with weapons made by men. It was a spiritual warfare. And we see a, a lot of it in this parashah, this Torah portion. Numbers 31.3 says, Moses was commanded by Yahweh to equip the men, and Brother Hunter read this earlier, for the war that they may go against Midian and execute the Lord's vengeance. I'm going to read that again. Moses was told, Numbers 31.3, if you all want to go back over it and study it, please, it's, it's awesome to get into this yourself. Moses, by God, Moses was commanded by Yahweh to equip the men for the war, that they may go against the Midian and execute the Lord's vengeance. I don't know if you've read that before, that really stuck out to me. It says, for the war. So Yahweh's people... You know, they sought God to know what to do. So what I understand, my understanding is that Israel did not start this war, but they were going to finish it because it says for the war. And so Yahweh answered Moses and Moses got the people ready for the war. And if they didn't fight, guess what? Not out. You have to fight. You have to stand up for the things of the Lord in your life. So the Lord had the Psalms 94, 23, 24 says, 
The Lord has become my rock of refuge, hallelujah. He has turned their own wickedness against them. He will destroy them because of their sins, and the Lord our God will destroy them. So the enemies, this is all on them, the war they started and everything that they caused, the enemies, they wouldn't quit. So they caused this judgment on themselves. There's going to be a time when God's going to say enough is enough. And so they brought this on themselves. So Yahweh tells Moses to gather a thousand men from each of the tribe to fight. Do you ever wonder what that thousand men, why was everything a thousand? If you go through, you can see a thousand, a thousand, a thousand. So he, he told him to gather a thousand men from each tribe. So it's easier to understand why a thousand men from each tribe was required when we know the biblical meaning of a thousand. We went over this, I don't know if everybody remembers, but a thousand represents forever. The number a thousand in Hebrew is very significant. It symbolizes fullness of quantity, multitude, and the number it invokes a very large time according to the Bible and is often used in the Bible to specify an indefinite quantity. And then we also know, we, went over, we said this not too long ago, a thousand years is a generation, or we might have done that in Bible study. Uh, a thousand years is a generation, which means the perfection of life. A thousand is used in referring to paradise and everlasting happiness, reigning with Messiah forever. And we, we've read quite a bit, Revelation 26, that talks about a thousand year reign. Forever, it's gonna be forever. So, uh, if you have any questions, let me know because I don't have time to go really into everything. But a thousand represents forever, to be with him, forever. So Israel was moving and marching to war in faith in the word of Yahweh, in the spiritual realm. See, they couldn't see, they couldn't see it, but they believed it. They walked by faith, not by sight. So being a doer, announcing to the enemy he's defeated by being a doer. That's what we're doing. We're saying, you're defeated, Satan. You're, you're, you're done with. We're going to walk in what God says. He's with us. That Yahweh was before them. So the spiritual war was already won forever. We know that from the, be from the beginning about the seed of Satan and all the way to Revelations where he's totally defeated. He's already been defeated. Um, but we're in the spiritual warfare. Um, so the war, the spiritual warfare was already won forever. A uh, thousand men from each tribe had, had God going before them. God was before them in the war. So Phineas, um, he was sent out. I believe Hunter read this in that portion we read. Phineas was sent out as Israel's army's leader. He had already killed out evil, stopped the plague in Israel. Now he went to war with God's holy vessels. Listen to that. He went to war with God's holy vessels and the trumpet in the leader's hand. So I'll, I'll come back to that in a minute. But Yahweh was showing the people Baal is defeated forever. They walked, they, the, the, the army was walking in thousands. Baal, you're defeated. It's forever, you're defeated. And Baal is defeated forever, for eternity. So Israel was in a spiritual warfare, and not only um, Israel was in a spiritual warfare, and only by, and even us now, and only by rejecting God, the truth, uh, this is, would cause the people to fall and bring curses and death on themselves. Why? Because Yeshua became that curse for humanity to be redeemed. Rejecting Yeshua, reject, rejecting Yahweh, rejecting the truth, how are you going to be redeemed? You, you can't be redeemed. Mm -hmm. At that time, back in, um, before Yeshua came, at that time there was animal sacrifice, which is done away with. It was a foreshadow of what Messiah would do for them. They were saved by receiving the truth in faith. Yeshua came and fulfilled that, redeemed us by his blood. He was the lamb. And last week we read there was a plague among Israel and many died because of joining themselves to Baal Peor, rejecting Yahweh. So what did they do? They sold themselves to Satan. They sold themselves to Baal. That is an easy way to explain it. Balak and Balaam tried to defeat Israel by trying to curse them through divination. We read that. Remember Balak 
he didn't even start the war against Israel physically. He started with demonic rituals to kill Yahweh's people. He started to, first thing he did was go get Balaam to try to overcome uh, them. And it was a spiritual thing. It wasn't the physical, which we know that all fights come from evil anyway. But the thing was, he went into the sorcery to do it. Balak and Balaam tried to defeat Israel by trying to curse them through divination. Um, but remember, Balak, again, he didn't even start that physical war. So we know, again, this is the war of the Lord showing us. This is a spiritual thing. So the battle was the Lord's vengeance, a spiritual war. The five kings who joined themselves with Balak and Balaam in an evil spiritual ritual, they all died along with Balaam, the soothsayer, in that war. And one of those kings who was among them was Zer, who was the father of the Midian princess, who went to the tabernacle with the Israel leader, who both were uh, slain. So, for trying to perform a satanic ritual in the tabernacle of God. And, I mean, it's all this crazy stuff. And know that when we had that, um, when we gave that, when I gave that uh, portion last week, Darlene sent me a link that actually said there was a church somewhere, I don't, I don't even know where, but ridiculous, that were doing the same thing, trying to do a ritual in the church. Today, this was what, not even a week ago that that article came out, and I don't know how true it is, but that's what was in the news. So it has to be stopped, it has to be judged. God judged the evil, and again, they had no power against God's people, it was the people who gave them that power over them by rejecting Yahweh's spiritual truth. They rejected it. So they opened the door, it was open to, to let the evil, lustful things come in. And man, so many people died. Uh, 24,000, I think, in, in, one, in that one uh, plague, and then more died. That's, uh, that's what sin does. But in this Torah portion, Israel prepared for war. Though they didn't start it, they finished it and won the war in the authority and power of the Lord. So the priests and all the garments and vessels, remember the tabernacle and everything that God told them to do according to what is in heaven. Well, the priests and all the garments and vessels were not made just to have and not made just to have a show, but they were made for spiritual battle. These were made for spiritual battle. Numbers 31 6 says, Priestly garments were made for war. The leader um, led in battle by wearing the priestly garment. So he says, Arm yourself for battle. Numbers 31 6. So Moses sent Phineas, or Pincus, son of Eleazar, the high priest, to war with the holy articles. And the, and the, single, the, single, the single trumpet in his hand or the signal, I'm sorry, the signal of the trumpet in his hand. He, he was ready to signal the trumpet. And if you read uh, different portions of the, the Bible, you'll see what the trumpet was for. A lot of it was for warning. And in, in times, if you go to Revelation, you're going to see the trumpets again. They sound out for war, different things that are happening. So the trumpet, at, at, excuse me, the trumpet signified also that the priests went with the nation of Israel into this war. Basically saying Messiah of Israel was leading the war. The Messiah, hallelujah, he is Yeshua. Even though he had been born, he was there. His, amen. And he, his spirit, he was with us. Hallelujah. He was with them. So his spirit, or the priests represented him. They went, was saying that the, God was with the nation of Israel in the battle. Numbers 10, 9 says, when you go to war in your land against an adversary who is oppressing you, there's a whole lot more to this too about oppressing you. You are to sound an alarm with the trumpet. Then you will be remembered before Adonai your God and you will be saved from your enemies. So carrying the holy vessels, the trumpet in hand guaranteed the warriors, the soldiers had the divine presence of Yahweh with them. And as a result, victory, bringing the holy things and shafar into the battlefield was declaring Yahweh was in the battle with them. Amen. Amen. Second Corinthians 13, 12 says, so look here, 
God is with us, leading us in his colon, which are the priests, with the battle trumpets to sound an alarm <laughs> against you. People of Israel, don't fight against Adonai, the God of your ancestors, because you will not succeed. So the word of God sounds his alarm, and he's warning his people, not just the enemy, he's warning his people. And he's telling us he's leading his people in battle, and he is with us. But if we reject the truth and his authority, we're fighting against him, and we will not succeed. And I think maybe a lot of us already know that. <laughs> But also, um, when you see someone trying to remove authority from their life and from society, it's demonic. And the, um, I can't, I don't remember his name, but I should have quoted him. He said that, but he took it out of the Bible. Lawlessness, because it's demonic lawlessness. The Antichrist is going to be everything about lawlessness. So someone who is against authority is operating for Satan. And you can read Romans 13. It talks about more about the authority. So the Midianites and the nations who were against Israel moved in lawlessness. They moved in their own rebellion, in lawlessness, trying to use witchcraft in the war, rejecting Yahweh and his authority. So we cannot fight a spiritual war in the flesh. We don't fight against flesh, but against spiritual principalities. How many of us know this is kind of funny, but it's true and it's dumb. <laughs> but there was a while back a preacher that we knew that was casting out a demon. I don't know if you guys believe in this or not, but we actually witnessed this. And he had a, <laughs> it wouldn't come out. So he um, took a, a scarf or something and put a ball in it and was going to hit him with it to try to make it come out. You can't do that. You're not going to hit somebody in the flesh and make a demon come out. You have to do this with the spiritual authority of God. I don't know. I've seen a lot of things. I don't know um, about you guys believing me or not. <laughs> We've seen that. We know the power of God. And I mean, God tells, Yeshua tells us all these things that are happening. That's why I say, do you really believe that God is God? Because we read the things that he does in, in, the, in the Bible. We read about the prophets and how they brought fire down. Can they really do that? Do we really believe that? Well, it's not them. It's God. It's his power. It's his word that does that. So, yeah. I mean, we see Yeshua doing all this in the, in the written how to show also. So, what I'm saying is nothing compared to what they said and what they did. <laughs> so, and praise God. This Torah portion also teaches us that the fight, again, is spiritual. And we need Yahweh in the battle with us. Whatever we're going through, we need him with us. He leads us, and we are undefeated if we have a sure foundation and faith in him. So the enemy has always been defeated forever. A thousand represents forever. But the enemy doesn't quit. He continues to pursue us. So we have to put on our spiritual armor and prepare for war. Ephesians 6, 10, 20 says, finally, grow, and this is, I think it's a complete Jewish Bible version, Com finally grow powerfully in union with the Lord, in union with his mighty strength. Use all the armor and weaponry that God provides so that you will be able to stand against the deceptive tactics of the adversary. So, for we are not struggling against human beings, but against the rulers and authorities and cosmic powers governing this darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. He tells us, if you go fight with somebody hand in hand because of whatever that you think or what's ever going on that you're mad, that is, you're not going to solve it by that because it's a spiritual warfare. You can beat somebody up, but it's not going to solve the problem. You have to go. It's a spiritual warfare, amen? So Moses prepared the army to go to war with the spiritual armor of God on. Israel went to, to war again, led by Phinehas, who Yahweh had made covenant with of peace, of shalom. Because he all that fighting and everything that was going on, it was, um, he, he got, he destroyed the evil, and it brought that peace between uh, disobedient people and God because they had fell away from God. 
to sin. So by getting sin out of the camp, praise the Lord. And also at this point, Yahweh had blessed Phineas with the priesthood forever. So Phineas leading the army with the spiritual vessels, hallelujah, he, he was put to lead the army to the war with, but he had the spiritual vessels, the trumpet of Yahweh, Israel, hallelujah, they could not lose for God before you who could be against you. So yeah. again, we're in spiritual warfare. So let us take up every piece of war equipment, the whole armor of God provided for us, what he provided for us and put it on. We need to put that on people. We need to put it on. Even though the war is won, Satan hasn't given up. And we have our high priest Yeshua and he is forever interceding for us and he is leading us and he's gone before us. He's won the battle for us, but we have to get back home from the battlefield. We're in a battlefield right now. We have to get back home. We have to stay in the uh, military to have directions or in the army of God to get directions and staying on the narrow road to home from the battlefield. We can't just say, oh, the war, the battle's won, you know, God did this for me, we won, and then forget it. No, we got to stay in that military army with Yeshua as our, our high priest as he leads us because we're going home, right, mate? We're going home back to the eternal promised land. We got to stay with our command and leader, Yeshua. Because in this battlefield, even where we are right now, there are still enemies on the battleground, and we don't know where they will pop up from. We don't know when they're going to show up. So we have to keep our spiritual armor on and keep our faith in our commander, Yeshua. So again, putting on the full armor that he has provided for us. So Ephesians 6, you can go there and read it. It talks about having our loins girt about with truth. Truth was the whole thing. Don't reject truth. Having our loins gird about with truth. Having on the breastplate of righteousness, which is him, because our righteousness is as filthy rags. It has to be his, Yeshua's. And our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We don't use our feet to go around causing problems and trouble, going to the wrong places. But And then having the shield of faith, which is the helmet of salvation. And the sword. Now, remember, we're still in our military, so the sword, these are the things that he's given us, our armor in the battlefield. And the sword of the spirit, hallelujah, which is the word of God. The sword of the spirit, the sword of the spirit, the word of God, hallelujah. And then it says, praying always with supplication in the spirit and watching with all perseverance yeah. and supplication for all saints. Again, for all saints, not just for us, for all saints. Right. Numbers 10, 9 says the spiritual battle is the enemy. Talks about the spiritual battle, that he's the enemy who, who oppresses us. And I think Brother Hunter read that. Numbers 10, 9. It says go and battle against the enemy who oppresses you. So in many different ways, we are oppressed. That's why we have to have on that, that whole armor because the enemy comes in different ways different ways and tries to attack us, tries to attack our mind, oppress our mind, oppress, uh, put sickness on us, oppress us with sickness, oppress our spirit. And a lot of times he tries to oppress us with family, friends, and uh, whatever going on, but we have to be able to understand this is the enemy, and he's the one that comes to cause friction, and he's the one that tries to oppress us. So we have to have the whole armor of the Lord on because this is a spiritual warfare. We can't beat it any other way. So having in our hands the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, we go forth marching in faith, amen, in the spirit of God. Hallelujah. He says in 1 Peter 2, 9, he says, but you are a chosen people. We are, you all are a chosen people, those who give their life to him, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. So God <laughs> And we're God's special possession, that you will declare the praise of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. So we are his priests. We're marching in that uh, army of the Lord, undefeated, forever. But we have to walk in his truth. We have a solid foundation um, in him. So this is what the Lord was uh, bringing my heart about. Uh, for tonight is about having victory 
because we are in a spiritual warfare and we have to learn how to overcome that spiritual warfare in the, through his word, but we have to believe that uh, what his word says. We have to have that foundation, that spiritual foundation. It, when he came, he said, the Bible tells us that he was the, um, he was the cornerstone that his people rejected. I don't want to be there today. You know, we still do the same thing. We don't want to do that. We don't want to reject the cornerstone who holds everything together. He's the one that holds our faith together. He's the one that holds his word. I mean, the sky is still hanging because of his word. But if we don't have that foundation, if we don't have him as the cornerstone because he's the truth, we're going to fall. We're going to fall because I don't want to be a foolish man that builds his house or this house upon sand. It's going to fall. Any time of all, the Bible tells us any time the wind or the rains come, it's, you know, it's, if the rains come, it's going to wash it away. If the wind comes, it's going to blow it away because there's no foundation. But if you build on a solid rock, who is Christ Jesus, nothing can move us. We'll be like a tree planted by the water. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. So let's uh, go forth in the name of Yeshua and ask him to help us to Make sure that he is our corner, our cornerstone, that we're building our faith on him and not what so-and-so says or what so-and-so does or what church this church did or what that church did. Because, I mean, that's, that's up to God and them. But we have to have that foundation in God. So no matter what goes on in this world, I mean, we see things falling left and right. The world, the sand can be... Uh, like our land can be like seeing the sand around us, but it says run to the rock, Christ Jesus. All this stuff going on around us, it don't matter. We have that foundation. He is our cornerstone. We have faith in him. We're going to make it. Even if that land, you know, the ground gets sunken in, he's going to lift us up. Amen. Because we're not on that sinking sand. We're on a solid rock. Amen. So thank you, Yeshua. Let's stand. Thank you, Father. Let's build our faith on truth, amen? On truth. Like I said, I don't know everything. Nobody knows everything. But I know my life is not made for just living here. My life is to do something for the Lord. My life, I'm living my life to speak truth, the truth of Yeshua. So all of us actually should be there, living our life for Yeshua. What is it if you don't if you if you have a life and you're just doing nothing, what good is it? What are we accomplishing? What's going on? What is our life for? I mean, if we are not being used of God, because we're preparing for eternity. Not just for here, but eternity. Um, I was listening to a a, a major um, prophecy preacher, and I just went blank on his name. But anyway. He was saying, you know, there's going to be a famine. And the famine is always judgment before uh, different things happen. And he's, you know, he was he was saying to prepare mostly, and I mean everybody probably knows this, mostly prepare yourself, your heart to be ready for what comes. And also, if you are, and this is up to you only, I mean, this is what he was saying, and then you can go back and Job, I mean in um, Joseph and you can check out how he says to prepare too because it's not wrong to prepare and he was saying if you would like to prepare prepare for about three months because you never know what tragedy might hit as far as storms or whatever's going on and anyway just ask the Lord mostly the most important thing is to prepare ourselves to know that you know that you know that he's with us thank you Father thank you Yeshua Again, for who you are, Father, that you love us, Father. We thank you again, Lord God, hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for being our foundation, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to know the truth that it sets us free. Thank you, Father, that during this time, Lord God, as we walk in this world, Lord God, Lord God, that we are in this field, Lord God, we walk through here, but this is not our home, Lord God. Lord God, give us your wisdom and your understanding, Father God, to be able to fight the spiritual warfare, Father, to be ready, Lord God, for all things, Father God, with your weapons that you've given us, Lord God, to be able to overcome the world, Lord God, the enemy, Father, that we will be ready, Lord God, when you come. 
Thank you, dear Heavenly Father. Again, Lord God, help us. Help us, Lord God, because without you, we can't do nothing. We'll be lost without you, Father. Help us, lead us, guide us, Lord God. Guide us, Lord God. Help us to surrender and be led by you, Lord God. And to be doers, to be doers of your word, Father, so that we will not deceive ourselves just saying it but not doing it. Help us to be doers. Thank you, Lord, that you gave me salvation, Lord God. And thank you for the salvation that you've given all your people, Lord God. And help us now, Lord God, to walk, Lord God, in your way as you are our cornerstone. Thank you, Father, that our faith be strengthened in you. We ask in your name, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to go ahead and we're going to do the priestly blessing. Y'all can read this too. If you have a, a Bible, open it up and um, read the blessing. You can bless your family with it. It's uh, Numbers 6, and it starts with verse 24. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I don't know if you have English or if you have a, if you have a complete Jewish Bible, it'll be there in English and in Hebrew. So bless your children, too. Thank you, Father. Because, again, when God says to speak this out, it's invoking his name upon you. And then you are blessed. Hallelujah. Yahweh, Adonai ve'yesh mareka. Ya'er Adonai pana eleka venuka. Isa Adonai pana eleka ve'akshim reka shalom. Mabazol bless him, Mabazol keep him. Mabazol make his face sing upon you and be gracious to you. Mabazol lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. So, um, if you guys want to, I'm going to give you a few moments to say the prayer to each other. Bless your, bless your people. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In English, Hebrew, don't matter. It's the word of God. So, thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Father. Bless your people, Lord. Thank you, Father. Let your word go forth and prosper where it is sent on to. Thank you, Father. Your word is sent unto us, Lord, and we receive it, and we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Okay. Shabbat Shalom. Shalom. And Brother Hunter's coming, and if there's anybody here that has any offering, uh, you can see Pastor Bob. Thank you. Well, Shabbat Shalom. Uh, thanks for... Uh, tuning in tonight, we have a few announcements. Uh, as mentioned last week, we would get some dates up for the fall feast. So these are up on, these have been up on our website for a few days now, uh, this week. Uh, Rosh Hashanah, or Yom Teruah, known as Feast of Trumpets, will be Sunday, September 25th at 6 p.m. Sunday, September 25th at 6 p.m. We chose that time because that's when the days are going to start getting shorter. And so that'll be close to sundown. Uh, Yom Kippur will be on Tuesday, October 4th at 6 p.m. So that's Tuesday, October 4th at 6 p.m. is Yom Kippur. And then finally will be Sukkot on Sunday, October 9th at 6 p.m. That's right, seven days later. So uh, funny how that all works out, but actually it's the way God works. So anyway, those are the three feasts coming up. And we will get those Facebook events posted to our Facebook page very soon. Right now we just have them on our website, but when we post them on Facebook, please click on that and let us know that you're coming. Hit there, hit that little button, the little star that says I'm going. That way we can make the proper preparations uh, for everyone to, uh, that's going to be coming. So you can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Instagram. You can also find us on uh, YouTube where we will be uploading a copy of tonight's service for you to view. We have all of our services there. And as always, uh, as Rabbi mentioned, uh, in terms of offering, you can go to BethelTempleFellowship.org, click on Donate, and that will take you to our secure web portal where you can make a donation, you can make your tithes and offerings 100% tax deductible, 100% secure. So thank you so much, take care, and God bless you. Amen. Thank you, and...
Thank you again for let's uh, lift up each other in prayer and help each other and let's go out and get the unsaved, amen, and put that seed in them so that they will be ready when the issue of comes. He's coming soon. Amen. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.